All we ever wanted to be was to be a pro wrestler. Growing up, kids around us, they wanted to be a baller, they wanted to be a rapper, or they wanted to be a hustler on that street corner. Not us. When you were hurt, when you got injured, huh? When you thought you were never gonna wrestle again, who was there to pick you up? Me. When it was over for me, when I didn't want to do it anymore. Who got me up and in that ring? You did. Yeah, our family, they support us. Conan supports us. Conan is always in our corner. Except for that one time. And what happened? We lost everything. We went on a losing streak. But we need to come to facts. We need to realize the truth. And that's Conan, he's not gonna be in our corner. We need to prove it to him. We need to prove it to our family. We need to prove it to the fans. More importantly, we need to prove it to ourselves. It's that we can do this on our own. When we first started, what did we say that we wanted to do? Just be considered one of the best. And here we are, standing before each other as one of the best tag teams in the game today. Here we are, standing before each other as the longest reigning tag team champions in the history of this company. Hmm? Now, if we didn't give Penta and Phoenix a shot at these straps, how were we supposed to go back to the block? How were we supposed to go back to our city? But guess what, Papa? January 6th, we're gonna make history because that's exactly what LAX does, huh? We're gonna give you the Lucha Brothers. We're gonna give you the Latin American Exchange for the World Tag Team Titles. LAX 5150, the time for doubting is over. Hasta la muerte y después. <laughs> you listening to the cart charisma athleticism and raw talent and what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact don't you dare miss a lesson oh yeah Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans. Happy New Year. <laughs> we are here in 2019 to talk about the January 3rd episode of Impact Wrestling, the first one of 2019 and the last one on Pop TV. This is Trent, and alongside me is not Kyle, because Kyle is still nursing his New Year's hangover because he's a drunk. But with me is... Brian. Brother Brian, cousin Brian, whatever you want to call him, he is here for you, ladies and gentlemen. And he's here to fill Kyle's shoes again and save his ass again. Or you can call me, it's called 17, go buy my uh, gamer tag. Gamer tag? Go ahead and plug your gamer tag real quick, real quick. Well, so also, well I, I'm so used to going to like GameStop with my friends. Every time I, where I go, I just walk in and everyone's like, Skull! So I'm so used to just being called Skull. Call him Skull. He's got a skull, and so do you. Everybody, we can relate to things. So Brian and I are sitting here, and it is January 5th, and we are about to head out to homecoming in Nashville. We got a couple of cars going. It's going to be a party. We got the Airbnb ready. We're going to go to the asylum for the first time. I'm excited about it. But before we do, we wanted to get this last episode in, so we have a little review. So let's go ahead and go through that real quick, Brian. I'm going to cut that down. We're going to go match by match, give some thoughts, a couple homecoming predictions, and uh, we'll take it from there. What do you say? I say go for it. Go for it. All right, guys. So we opened up huge 10-man tag team match. Huge. And it was pretty much everybody, it seemed like. But you had uh, shit. I mean, you had Willie Mack, Rich Swan, the Rascals taking on Ethan Page, Matt Seidel, and OVE. It's a lot of talent. All of which we know, I think, from AEW. Except Willie Mack. We never had Willie Mack, did we? No, never. Never had Willie Mack. Everybody else, I think we've had. Uh, Ras- yeah, Rascals we get all the time. Rich. Yeah, everybody else is an AEW guy. Yep. So we know these guys really well. We love these guys. What a crazy tag team match. You can imagine, Brian, after seeing these guys as much as we do, uh, how great this match would have been. What are your thoughts on... Uh, before we get into it, what are your thoughts on... You know the Rascals, their momentum lately. We just we just saw them last weekend. What do you think about the Rascals? They're going good. Uh, I just 
it's because they're so new to Impact. But yeah. see, it's like you think about it as I'm so used to seeing them on the indies, but on TV, it's a different perspective. So thinking of it as a TV perspective, wise, wise, uh, they're so fresh. Um, I don't know, like. Desmond, he's been on TV more, but... Yeah, I think, I think out of all of them, he's been on TV more than anybody. I don't know if they have, like, the jitters or anything, or... You still you feel like they're not, like... Well, we see in AEW, they're not... I think it's maybe because it's presented differently, so the way I'm watching it, and I see it live, because mm-hmm. if you go to any show, it's always better live, because you're there in person. You feel it, you, yeah. You feel it more. And when you watch on TV, sometimes you're just like... If it's the way it's edited or yeah. the way like the camera angles are, you're just like, eh. Could be. The, the three of them really work hard, though, yeah. I love about I, I really enjoy the skits they're doing. Yeah, um, skits are great. There wasn't one this week, though. Yeah, I think I just need to see them more regular tag ma- Not like regular tag match. It's not yeah. like a big... Because ten- that's where a lot of people get outshined or just ignored because they just see a big clusterfuck. Yeah, good point. Good point. I one thing they I noted. Uh, Josh mentioned there's a new Rascals T-shirt on ShopImpact.com. I wonder if it'll be at uh, Homecoming. Maybe. Maybe. Um, they really played up the Jake and Sammy mini draw mini thing draw. in the commentary, big time. Uh, I just want to know how that factors into this uh, the Sunday at Homecoming. Like does Sammy jump in there. Sammy help him. Does he break away from Sammy now? I mean, I don't know. It could be interesting. I think you like you. You're a big fan of Jake, right? You like Jake more out of out of uh, out of OB. David. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I love Sammy like the most, but like if you're going with uh, David uh, Jake, Jake because he, he does a lot more in the ring. There's a cool video, guys. Brian got one time where we we ran this venue called Bourbon Street, and Jake dove off the balcony. The video where you yeah. you followed him up the stairs. I don't have it anymore. That's all gone. Because my car got broken oh, yeah. too. Damn, yeah, that's some rare footage that's that's gone. But um, there was a uh, there was a cool video. So he followed him, and then he's, he's just like Brian behind him, and then Jake just kind of like climbing up these stairs and just going like ah! <laughs> like over this balcony. I actually knew of the spot, so I'm already upstairs. So I see him going, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you knew it was yeah. coming. Yeah, nice. Uh, Sammy, I noticed this is one the first time, not first time, but I noticed he does it a lot. He's a smaller guy. He's I think he's my height, maybe like five eight. But, yeah. But he wrestles like a big man. Like he he treats himself like a big big guy. Yep. That's why he can hang with all these guys. So like, it's weird because in this match he wasn't the biggest guy, but he felt like the biggest guy to me. Which presence is yep. all about presence and and how he displays himself. There was a really cool dive sequence on this one. The crowd was super hot. Everybody took a do a dive out. Super intense. Everybody looked strong in this one, which I loved. That nobody looked bad in this match. That was the key. All these guys are going to the pay per view. They all have to look good. You know, nobody nobody should look weak in this match. It was just a great display for everybody, which I loved. Uh, Willie pins Dave Christ after a top rope stunner. I think Dave is not on the pay per view. He'll probably accompany his brother, I, I imagine, but he's the one guy not on the pay per view. So. Um, Pretty, what do you think, Willie Mack? You saw him live in in, in uh, New Orleans, right? At that Impact Lucha show. Yeah, he. I'm impressed with how agile he is for his size. Yeah, he did well. Um, I just even Lucha Underground, I was not a fan. He's on Lucha Underground. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, yeah, I don't watch Lucha Underground. So what is he under a mask or what? No, he's just Willie Mack. He's just Willie Mack, but I just can't get into him. No. Like he can work and everything. It's just like. As me personally, I just can't get into him. No, I I was impressed. I, I was really just impressed with his ability. And I'm thinking like, the, the skits with him and Rich are yeah. pretty cool. And I'm like, I think they're kind of teasing the uh, the breakup. Mm-hmm. But I don't know uh, where you take Willie from that. But I I think he's a really talented guy. But after the match, Sammy attacked Willie with a bat, and then uh, they OVE gave Willie the uh, the all seeing eye through the table, and. Swan came in to save um, to save Willie, but he, Sammy backed off as soon as Swan was there. So they're kind of keep teasing this: what's what Swan got on Sammy, or what's this connection? Because Willie keeps questioning, you know, Swan, like, what are you? Why are you so? Why are you always defending them and this and that? So 
Again, how that plays in the pay-per-view, maybe... Swan's in the Ultimate X, though. Yeah. So I don't know if he's going to cost Willie the match, or I don't know. Well, maybe you got Sammy, because Jake's in there, too. He comes in, and then Willie comes out to try to stop Sammy, but he screws over Rich. Oh, okay. That could be cool. That could be really cool. There's something you got to do for sure, though. Something has to be done uh, at during that sequence yeah. for sure, just to, just to play it out. I kind of don't want it. I kind of want Ultimate X to just be clean. Them. Yeah, clean. Like I just want. I figure Dave's gonna come out though. At least he's gonna be with with um, Jake. Jake. Yeah. So, but yeah, I agree. I would like it to be clean. I'd like it to be like showcase. Like I've waited my life to see an Ultimate X match live. Yeah. I when I was at Bound for Glory, I was like hoping for an Ultimate X, and they did that tower or the the cage, right? The red cage. Yeah, the dome, whatever. Terra dome. Terra dome, whatever it's called. I forgot what it's called, but that was a that was a crazy looking cage, man. <laughs> um, they did a, they did a Moose and Eddie Edwards uh, retrospective, just kind of hyping the feud and the match. Eli Drake is in the ring after that. He uh, he named his paddle Patty. His little paddle. Patty. Mm, Patty the paddle. Very clever. <laughs> very clever. <laughs> very clever there, Eli Drake. Patty the paddle. Uh, he calls out Impact Management and just kind of on how they keep putting him in these situations and how it's not fair to him. But uh, he also calls himself the last of a dying breed. Which I wonder where I, wonder where I heard that before. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I He was doing it when Eddie Kingston was still in the, uh, in the company. Unless Eddie was like, yeah, cool, go ahead. But yeah. I think Eddie's still hashtagging that, though. I think. I'm not sure. I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. Maybe it's one of those things where it's like Eddie did it on the indies and do it on TV. So it's like, hey, whatever. Um, what was it? Bull James did it on NXT. But Eddie's like, he actually asked Eddie. Eddie's like, yeah, go really? ahead. Maybe Eli <laughs> asked Eddie. Who knows? Um, but he, uh, he calls himself hardcore, which prompted Tommy Dreamer to come out. Because anytime he... Tommy Dreamer, it's like the it's like the bad signal with Tommy Dreamer, like you, the word hardcore is said and Tommy Dreamer appears, or if you say it three times in a in a mirror, Beetlejuice, Tommy Dreamer appears behind you. Hardcore, hardcore, hardcore. hardcore. Uh, he comes no, out. He, <laughs> no, no Dreamer, no Dreamer. Or you at, you son of a bitch. Uh, he GTs Eli Drake. Lights go out, and Ravens in the fucking ring. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, what is happening, Raven? In an impact ring, or in a wrestling ring on TV in 2019, uh, it looked cool. They did a face-off. They teased it. Raven turned on uh, Eli, and then they both did the Raven pose. Feud's over. The biggest feud and longest feud in wrestling history is done. You think Raven shows up at Homecoming? Yeah. Yeah? You, you gotta have, like, people from... You need the past, right? Yeah. 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 Even though, like, they're like, oh, TNA's, like, that it's impact now. But you can't throw away all those, like, great memories and stuff. Yeah. Do you see that cold open they, they yeah. released? That was cool. That was super cool. Because I, what I want, I want James Mitchell. Yeah. And then Raven to show up. And then just James Mitchell would be like, remember that time I shaved your head? <laughs> <laughs> like, the, such an opportunity for them to do, like, skits and, like, throwback shit. Because they have all the footage to, like, reference. You know? So, um, no, that'd be cool. I'm really looking forward to... Uh, to seeing to seeing what what they pull out old school wise, but um, after that the Daisy Hit Squad, Daisy Josh Matthews, Daisy keep saying hey, Desi. Now you can actually tell. I can tell. I'm gonna tell Josh Matthews in person. It's Daisy, not Desi. It's Daisy Hit Squad taking on Fala and KM. Uh, Chacha Gama dedicates this match to Scarlet Bordeaux, your pal, Miss Scarlet. Dedicates the match to her because they're all obsessed with Scarlet. And uh, the, Cam and Fala come out super over with the crowd. And match gets going. Scarlet comes out and everybody gets distracted, stops in their tracks. Probably an everyday occurrence for her when she just goes to Target, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Same kind of feeling. But uh, great back and forth match. They did the panda rolls and all that stuff. And Fala pins Raj with the bonsai. But looks over at Scarlet and says something first. What? Hold on. What, what, <laughs> what could he have possibly said? Where, where is she? Maybe it was Ba. Ba. What? Ba ba ba. 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 What? Uh, are you? Are you? Are you googling? <laughs> are you? Wait, are you texting Scarlet right now? Yeah. This is live, <laughs> live, everybody. Brian is texting Scarlet right now, live on the show. That's a first. That's something Kyle can't do. 
Cal can't do much right now because he's hung over and drunk as fuck. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, while Brian's get waiting on a response from Scarlett, I'm gonna say do, now where do we go from here? Do they she, win? She's probably too busy. Right oh now. yeah, she's probably down on natural. I assume already. But um, on the strip, on the strip, hanging out. Do KM and Fala now win Scarlett's management? Because that was the thing. She's like, why don't you guys fight over me? So does she manage them? It could be an interesting little pairing though. Like you put Scarlett with those two, it could be funny. It could be. Ba 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 ba. They just need to like redo her theme song with just follow, just doing that. <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, we go to a Lucha Brothers promo backstage on LAX in uh, in Espanol, subtitled. The what's that? What's that effect they do? They do like a cool like video effect that's kind of like. I don't know how to describe it, man. It's like it's like this weird draining colors and like that's all post production, I assume, right? Like or which whenever um, whenever Lucha Brothers have a backstage thing, they do like a backstage promo and it's like this really cool like these lights like it's like it, all this crazy like it's multiple things. So it's color cool. correction, it's warping, it's warping, yeah, layers. It's so cool though. I, I love how they how they present those two as like. They're almost like they're these wizards, and I don't know, man, not wizards, but like they're like these characters that just come from a different realm or something. I love it. I love how uh, I love how they present them. Next match after that, guys, Dark Alley with Sue Young taking on Kira, and uh, the they really played up like how Alley's lost her soul, and like how she's got this new aggression, so, you know, going from like the bunny to the demon thing now, and. Uh, so they really keep pushing that how she's just dark alley, dark alley. But uh, one of the best lines in this, Brian, was Josh asked Don, he goes, uh, what's your New Year's resolution, Don? And he goes, to be a play-by-play guy. And <laughs> Josh is like, well, yeah, maybe for explosion. <laughs> You're not getting this job, pal, or something. It was like, that was line, line of the show, for sure. Um, Allie wins with a code breaker. I think there's too many people using the code breaker. Am I, am I wrong? No, I think there's a lot of moves that are just, in my opinion, just overused. Like who, somebody, Cutter, Cutter, Reverse for sure. Rana, Super Canadian Pink. Destroyer. Oh my God, Destroyer. Code Breaker. Yep. P.D. Williams said if he, if he got commissioned for every time somebody hit a Canadian Destroyer, he'd be fucking retired years ago. But uh, yeah, code, somebody else used the Code Breaker too the other day. And I'm like, when did this become the, the new move to go to now? But uh Allie's got some new music I noticed. That was one thing I, I picked up on. And then afterwards, uh, afterwards, Allie and Sue Young attacked Kira and Jordan Grace came out to make the save and beats the shit out of both of them. Uh, we got a response back from uh, Scarlett. And Scarlett says, what did Paul about say to her when he yelled over at her? Bah. Bah. <laughs> <laughs> Like legit. Well, b- like I think it was two bas, but she just responded ba 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 ba. Yeah, so that was live, guys. Scarlett just told us that she yelled ba. But um, we go from that to a Tessa and Taya retrospective. What do you predict for this one, Tessa and Taya? This is like their. This is this is a nice few. I think they're going to give it to Taya, but yeah. I really I want Tessa to retain. Tessa's too good, man. She's just so fucking good right now. I, it's like, what do you do? I, like, you don't want to take it off her because she's so good, but like, it's like Ty's story's been built in for her to get it. Gail Kim's a special referee, and it's like, hard time saying no to her. Because then you kill, like... I don't know, I just... I really don't like Gail Kim being in the match, like in the field. As a referee? Yeah. yeah. It, just, it, like, it makes I, predictable? For, no, it's just... In my, like, opinions, I just don't really care for it. No, as a special. Like I, I get it. Like you know, something special make it more. But I just hate how sometimes you uh, throw in that special referee, just uh, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Yeah, because this is like what the third time or whatever. Third one. Yeah, yeah. So like, I get it, but just me seeing it live, it's like I don't really. I just want a match. I don't want you know. Oh, because Gil Kim's the ref. Yeah. Because I, I, cause you know Gail's going to get in something. Get, yeah. her, get her shit in, kid. You know, she's going to get her shit in. But uh, I, I feel like it makes it predictable. You want to really fuck with everybody, you have Tessa retain. That throw everybody off like, what the fuck? But then it might piss everybody off too. Like, I don't know, man. Fans are fickle. 
I don't know what which. You can go either way. Fans are weird. Fans are weird. We're weird. Um, what are you talking about, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I am a fucking Mark. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a Mark this weekend. We are totally a Marks this weekend, and we're gonna be some Mark and Ons. Goddamn <laughs> Nashville hot chicken, son! I can't wait to get to that. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> Brian's face right now is like, oh god, I'm starving. I didn't eat anything yet, and he's talking about food. So now I'm just like, well, yeah. It's gonna be fun because uh, Basil, who's a uh, buddy of ours, he's the he's uh, my co-host on the Backstage Boys podcast. So yeah, check that out, guys. The Backstage Boys podcast. It's a production-based podcast for indie wrestling. Basil is all a photographer, and he's gonna be doing photos ringside for the pay-per-view and TV tapings. And he's got to be at the building early, which means we're going out to get some goddamn hot chicken in Asheville. So if you got your recommendations, guys, leave them in the comments below. Tell us where we should go if you're from Nashville. I was told after we eat it, make sure we're not doing anything for a while because it's going to go right through us. Not me. I got that. I got those brown jeans. I, uh, I can handle spice and everything. I'm good. I'm safe. You guys might need a break. Luckily, I'm, where we're staying is not too far. I'm white like a dry erase board. <laughs> uh, after this, Trevor Lee bursts into management's office and asks for a match. He demands a chance. He goes, I'm sick and tired of this shit. And it's like the uh, the voices. It's Basically, it's Don and, and Damore. And they're like, hey, kid, we like your style. And that's, about, that's like the hands thing they did. I guess it's from being the elite. I didn't know yeah. that. But uh, it's like the hands. Like, we're going to give you a shot. We're going to give you a shot. So he's like, all right, cool. So then, this, so this is Trevor's last match in Impact, mm-hmm. as it's been announced. But we'll get to that in a second. LAX does a promo outside after that, and really good promo. Did you see this promo? Did you like really pay attention to this promo? Like this was really deep. Uh, which one? It was the one where they they were outside and they were really talking about their dreams and like what got them to this. And no, like, I didn't watch that part. Super passionate promo. Uh, I love I love how how true they came off. They were really, like, believable. And it was, like, about how they worked their bust of their ass and they achieved their dream. Got me super hyped for the show. I, those two guys are great. They're two of my favorites. Win or lose, this match, I think, may steal the damn show. It's going to be... This is a tough show. Got an Ultimate X. Got LAX taking on the, the Lucha Brothers. This is going to be a tough show, man. T- tough show that, like, for everybody to beat each other out. But this is, I think, a show stealer. So Trevor Lee comes out after that. His mystery opponent, Killer Cross, who hasn't wrestled in a while. Yeah, Killer- and I'm glad he, even though it was kind of like a small thing, I'm glad he actually got like in ring time. Yeah, he he needs that once in a while to get over, like to keep stay over. The guy is super over. He was in Vegas, which I think is his hometown, but uh, people love him. People I see online, people love Killer Cross. This is like. A next level type of heel people really want to get into. He beat the piss out of Trevor. Like, he beat Trevor's ass. Uh, Doomsday Saito, cross jacket choke. And this is Trevor's farewell. Like, so he, he, this is Trevor's last match in Impact, and he lost to Killer Cross, but it wasn't over yet. They He cuts a promo on Johnny Impact, and he says, Would you like to see Johnny what happens when diplomacy fails? Which I thought was a great line. And then he. Goes goes and grabs this like squirmy timekeeper, the the bell keep bell ringer timekeeper kid, and the kid's like legit looking like he's shitting his pants. He brings that kid in to the ring. He's forcing him to like hold. He brings a cinder block from underneath the ring, makes this kid hold the cinder block in Trevor Lee's face, and then punches through the goddamn cinder block. Trevor Lee dead done. See you later, kid. It was nice. Um, real quick, Trevor Lee's run an impact. What do you say? We, we're so used to seeing him in another light at AEW all the time. I think he shined the most when he was X Division champ. First, like the first the, run, the green one, the or green whatever. belt run. Yeah, the uh, he's three time champion. One of the runs was like a flop, like a week to week, like trade off kind of win, I think. But yeah, the green title during the GFW thing, that I think was his best run. All the, during that whole time, he's walking at AEW backstage. You play my music. If, what if in tag team, play my music because I'm a TNA Impact Wrestling superstar. Six. X Division, you're just walking around in the back. X Division champ! <laughs> <laughs> he was. He's walking around going, X Division champion, baby! And then yeah, his promos are all about, I'm a TNA X, uh, Impact Wrestling superstar. I remember the one he did in LaSalle. Well, you would always say TNA just to get more heat. Yeah, oh yeah. 
the, he, he dropped it later on. But yeah. I, I thought this was funny. I remember um, it was getting heat at first. And then when, like, Impact got, like, had the reboot and everybody started liking Impact because it was all AAW guys, too. I remember when he did it in LaSalle. And he's like, oh, I'm an Impact Wrestling superstar. And everybody popped. And then, like, he stopped doing it a little bit after that because he was like, well, it's not getting heat anymore. Everybody's like it. Like, everybody's cool with Impact now. Nobody's, like, dogging it. So I wasn't getting heat. Everybody's like, yeah! <laughs> so, it, like, he had to stop doing it. But uh, my favorite one was when in LaSalle when he's like, if you win, I forgot who it was against. He's like, if you win this match, I'll give you a shot. Bound for glory, Ottawa, Canada. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on down. If you can beat me. Who was that one against? I can't remember. But it was, like, it was before the uh, Bound for Glory 2017. God, I can't remember who he fought, but he it was just such a funny promo. But um, so he's out. Good run for Trevor. His first TV, good experience. He uh, he's announced that he's a free agent. Him and DJZ both like same day. I think December thirty first announced they were done contractually. So eh, not bad. Um, they announced Sammy versus Willie Mack for the pay per view, and Kira and Jordan Grace taking on Ali and Sue Young officially. So they announced it right here based on what happened earlier in the show. The GW and throwback was Sacrifice two thousand five. Jerry Lynn, our buddy. Dude, I miss Jerry. I miss Jerry. And she versus Shaw Maltman. What a great match. Just watching it again on the flashback, I'm like, holy shit, this match is fucking great. I mean, obviously, those two fought each other a thousand times. But, uh, man, Jerry Lynn is a special special place in our heart at AEW. I, I wasn't working at the company at the time, but he was uh, he was a big part of AEW in the beginning. You want to just quickly say, mention little Jerry's presence when you were there in the early days? Because he's the one who got me to go to AEW. Okay. Like, I started, I went, I heard Jerry Lynn was there. I was like, man, I got to go to AEW. I don't know where to, like, even start. Because uh, I, I started in 07. Like, I've been going, I was going to shows in, like, 06 and stuff. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he was, because he was bigger in AEW in 05, right? No. He, he, by the time I started working in the company, he was, uh, I think, Becoming big, I think he was champion when I was working there. Oh seven, he was. Oh six, oh seven, he was. Came champion. out to like this uh, remix version of Hallelujah, like a like a metal kind of mix or whatever. Really, like, like a rock mix. That was a song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love Jerry, man. I remember the first time I met him at AW at the Berwyn e- the Berwyn Eagles Club, guys. If you've heard of that place, I don't know how many of our impact our total nonstop impact uh, impact tribe has heard of the Berwyn Eagles Club, but it is. A legendary shithole in Chicago. Great tacos in Berwyn, though. Dude, I miss Berwyn tacos. Berwyn tacos. Uh, if you guys are ever in Berwyn, Illinois, which I doubt any of the the loungers ever will be. Maybe I don't know. We might have a couple. There's a lot of loungers who don't uh, who don't comment. I know well, a lot of ones who comment. If, <laughs> if they go to a rise show and they usually have them, still oh, at that's the right. Eagles so, Club. So right across the street, there's a taco place. Yeah, Rise, Rise being partnered, Rise, the, the women's promotion run by Kevin Harvey that partners with Impact. If you ever go to a Rise show in Illinois, they run out of this Berwyn Eagles Club, and across the street are Brian's favorite tacos. They are some great tacos. But, uh, yeah, you know, I want, I want one thing, Brian, I want to take a little pause. Loungers, there's a lot of loungers who don't co- leave comments on the videos. The ones who do, I love you guys. There's some really good ones. I... Didn't read the comments at the beginning of the show because um, it was the Super Show. Just wanted to let that be because it was all of us. End of the year on that one. I don't have Kyle here to bounce it off of and Adam and Rowe aren't on. So we ended it off. But uh, the guy, people who aren't leaving comments, guys, interact with us. I want to hear more. There have, there have been some new ones. Definitely let us know what you think, how it's going, how your New Year's been. What do you think for homecoming? Uh, like I said, Brian and I will be down there. So it's going to be fun. We'll have some good perspective coming back. But uh, the graphics, I just want to mention, the graphics lately on Impact have been awesome. Like the match graphics, I love. That's a little small note I had here. I love the match graphics. The Kevin Sullivan and his team in Nashville do an incredible job with the match, match graphics. Hire me. Yeah, hire Brian. <laughs> he does great match graphics, too. As long as I can work remote from home, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, with the internet, you can do anything you want. But, uh, all right, it's the main event here, guys. The Lucha Brothers. Pentagon and Phoenix took on Johnny, Johnny Impact, and Johnny, Johnny, who we've also had at AW. 
I, I, didn't, I interacted with him a little bit. He's a pretty nice guy. No, he's cool. Super chill guy. He basically is that character you see. He's like, what's up, guys? What's going on? How's it going? Cool. Yeah, I'm a star. I'm a rock star. Look at me. I'm Johnny Impact. You want to count my abs? But, uh, and Brian Cage also. Look at my muscles. <laughs> Brian, Brian Cage is funny because he's like this giant guy. We'll be seeing him tonight. We'll see, we'll see him tonight. He, we're going to, uh, real quick, we're going to a show called Warrior Wrestling tonight. Uh, which is about an hour south of Chicago, and it's basically on our way to Impact in Nashville. We're going to go to the Warrior Wrestling Show, meet up with all our buddies, get in a bunch of cars, and head, head down to Nashville. And a uh, bunch of Impact talent on tonight. Before Brian Cage, um, Tessa, Lucha Brothers, Matt Seidel was supposed to be on. He had to cancel. Ethan Page is on tonight. I'm trying to think who else. Um, Austin Aries. Hi, I'm going to put a little asterisk on that one. I don't know if he's still considered Impact Town or not. Uh, who else? I, I might be forgetting somebody, but there's a lot of Impact Town on tonight. But we've seen Brian Cage. Brian Cage is great, though, because he's a giant guy. And he's such a sweet dude. Like, you expect him to be mean, but he's not. He's a really nice guy. Great match. Really intense back and forth. I mean, Penta and Phoenix hit hard. They Penta, I know, definitely is stiff, even on TV. Back and forth. Lots of spots. They got a lot of spots into this one. They played up a little bit between these two opponents, uh, Cage and Johnny, because Johnny kept blind tagging himself in, and uh, they kept playing that tension, because like Cage kept getting pissed off that Johnny kept tagging himself in, so he didn't. That didn't go over too well, and there was a crazy super kick party at one point. Everybody got all, all discombobulated, and Cage accidentally clotheslines Johnny Impact, and then the Lucha Brothers pin Johnny with the package power driver. And they face off. They're p- Johnny's pissed off at him, and he's like, "We're supposed to be opponents. Don't forget that. I'm not your friend." And the crowd broke into an option C chant, which I thought was pretty cool. Which, now that I think about it, the Vegas tapings have been stretched out so long because of the holiday that uh, he announced option C on the first Vegas show, I believe. So that crowd is still pretty fresh on the option C thing. So they chanted option C. Big uh, brawl to end it all at the end. They just started getting into it. Security came out. Talent came out. They beat the shit out of each other. Main event of Homecoming, Johnny Impact, Brian Cage went off with a brawl, which uh, which it should. Go home show should always go off with your main event as a brawl. And then uh, they ended it with that awesome Homecoming uh, retrospective video, which I loved. I thought that was so cool. You know what I don't like when they do? I hate when they really show... The opening for a pay-per-view before the pay-per-view. Yeah, that's what pissed me off, too, though. I was like, wait a minute. Because Johnny kept in the video, Johnny's narrating it. And he keeps saying, tonight is this, tonight is I'm like, wait a minute. You're This is the this is the opening video. It's not just retrospective. You're going to use this at the pay-per-view. Why would you guys give this away? They, they, you can give it away the next week, maybe. You know, maybe just, like, put it on YouTube or something. But I was kind of upset that they, they gave it away. But um, real quick, guys, let's run down the matches for Homecoming. We have... In your, let's give a couple of quick predictions, Brian. I gave it on the super show that we did with that Kyle and I did with Adam and Roe, but I'll do it with Brian here since we're actually going to be at homecoming. Unlike Kyle, who's a drunk, hungover son of a bitch, sitting on his couch, nursing his freaking wounds, licking his cuts, and and <laughs> being a bitch. <laughs> but uh, wait, a bitch or a fucking idiot? Uh, I use the fucking idiot thing a lot. People got people were really dogged him on the fucking idiot. Okay, thing. okay. That's all I know, because you just told me to call him a fucking idiot the first show, so I'm first like, show. I'll go with it. Yeah, we roll with the fucking idiot thing. The first thing Kyle said when he got that it's, episode... It's a new year. It's a new year, yeah. I'm not going to use those words as, as much, but the first thing Kyle said to me when he when he heard the episode, he's like, Jesus, went hard on the cow man on this one. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, hey man, you snooze, you lose. Today he's licking his wounds, being a bitch, but it's okay. It's still early in the new year. It's only the 5th. It's only five days in. I give Kyle at least a month to catch up He's in life. He's losing his mind, and I'm reaping all the benefits. That's right. That's right. I give Kyle at least a month to get caught up on life. But, uh, all right. The newly announced tag team match, Sue and Allie taking on Kira and Jordan. Who do you got in this one? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Sue and Allie. Sam, I'm going Sue and Allie on this one. I think Rosemary appears after the match is over. That would be cool. That'd be cool. Rosemary appears. All right. Next one. Eli Drake and Abyss. Monsters Ball. What do you got for this one? Uh, pardon me, want a bit wants a bit, but thinking of like booking wise, maybe Drake. Yeah, you gotta keep Drake strong. Abyss doesn't need the win. Yeah, 
But what you can do is have a lot of old school guys do run-ins on this one. This could be your like cluster of like, what the fuck? You know is what happening? I want the theme song for this match to be? Which one? Butcher Babies, Monsters Ball. Ooh, that'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be cool. I don't think they'd do it, but... No, but it would be sweet. <laughs> I would love, like, Raven, James Mitchell. I mean, shit, man. Who else? Uh, I mean, God, anybody. I'm, I'm Like, New Jack. I don't care if New Jack ran out on this one. Like, Shark Boy. Like, oh, God. Have them all run out on this shit, man. Jerry Lynn can run in on this. Who knows? I don't care. I got it. What? D-Ray 3000. D-Ray. <laughs> Let's see how many old school TNA fans remember that, that name. Uh... This could be fun, though. This could be a fun match. It's so unlike Eli Drake, but Eli winning would keep him strong. But then on the homecoming feeling of it, Abyss having the feel-good moment in the Asylum one last time could be nice, too. So I, I'm going to go with I'm gonna go with Abyss. I think it's just for the feel-good moment on this one. Next one, Sammy and Willie Mack. What do you got? I'm going with my boy Sammy. Yeah, I'm going with Sammy. Sammy's got to be strong. Sammy's the future of Impact. I think he's got to stay strong. Definitely gotta keep him. This is just no stipulation, just a blood blood feud type match. They hate each other. Let's go with it. Eddie Edwards and Moose. This is the false count anywhere match. This could get fun around the building. It could. I'm just not in, like I'm indifferent. Yeah, you never were a big Moose fan, even when we had him in AW. Like he's like Moose is cool, and it's just I'm not. I can't get into him. But the character, yeah, I just kind of character. The new character. I love okay, new, I'm getting more into the new character. The new character's good. The new character's really good. he's actually showing personality more. Big time. Big time. Um, the old Moose didn't have a character. Now he's like, he is something, right? I'm going with my boy Moose on this one. I think Moose has, has been great. He has kept this story really, really entertaining. I think Moose, again, is, is a future future star to lead Impact, so I'm going with Moose on this one. What do you think? I'm going to go with Moose, too. Like... I, this whole Eddie as like this crazy. I just he's I not he's not totally believable to me. He's not yeah yeah not as like that. being a psychopath. I love that he tries really hard. Mm-hmm. I give him like Eddie is working hard at it, but he's not as believable as a psychopath to yep. me. Uh, next one, Ultimate X, Rich Swan, Jake Crist, Ethan Page, Trey Miguel. This is a really tough one to call, man. What do you think? I want Swan to win. Me too. I called Swan on this one. The favorite, a lot of people said on the on the Super Show we did last um, couple weeks ago on, on the Impact Lounge, Jake Chris was the favorite on this one. I can see it. Like, either Swan or Jake. Jake getting it would be really good for OVE. Yep. It, it would keep OVE really strong, especially if Sammy wins also. The mini draw, I think Jake has worked really hard. I think he, he, earned, uh, he earned it. I, I see Ethan Page kind of keeping in the ground game strong on this one, and... Trey really shining for sure. Yep. Trey's a, l- a little guy. He's a smaller guy. I can see him flying a lot. I did talk to him uh, at AEW last time. He's like, man, I'm nervous as hell. That match looks. That match is insane. You know what I want Trey to do? Get new gear. He just got new gear. I, I've been seeing him wearing the same tights for like a year. It's that greenish thing. Yeah. So he just it's the same green, but then he's got per new print on it. Okay. So I think he's keeping the green color. Um. LAX versus the Lucha Brothers for the tag team titles. I think the Lucha Brothers are taking yep, this. Lucha. I think Conan is turning on LAX on this one. I do want uh, Kingston to show up and be like, told you. I told you, brother. I told you. <laughs> like, I could totally see it. I could totally see it. I would love it. It would make really good sense for Conan to turn on, the, on LAX and Kingston go back to LAX. And be like, I told you, I'm not, let's go. and then LAX turn heel or something. Yep. I don't know, it could be cool. That I would like to see. Yeah. Like them just getting all pissed off, what happened. Tessa and Taya, we talked about this a few minutes ago. I would love a twist where Tessa retains it. But yep. I think Taya's going to win this. I think Taya's due. Gail Kim as a special referee. Too much working against Tessa on this one. I concur. Apparently Tessa had a great match last night in Milwaukee Zello. against Zello Pro Kylie. against Kylie Ray. Yeah. And uh, main event, Johnny and Brian Cage. This is the one that no one's been able to really have a full reasoning opinion on. But I'm going with Brian Cage. I think Brian Cage looks good as a champion. I think so, too. These guys are both. They're good-looking guys. They're really in shape. They both are exactly what you want to represent your company. But I think Brian Cage has worked really fucking hard. Yeah. I just, for some reason, there's part of me where they're going to keep it on... uh... On Johnny. Johnny? I know. I keep getting this feeling like they're going to keep it on Johnny. 
I think Cage like because like even I hate I hate when like they're like oh we're gonna bring survive Johnny's survivor friends I know that threw me off I'm like damn it like now I'm like you guys are keep they, the they shit tried out. they tried to do that something with Moose like that it's like dude that's it doesn't work for you guys like nobody cares no like well it's like unless it's a a celebrity anybody, like anybody cares about. It's like, yeah, you could bring your survivor friends, but like, I don't know who they are. No, yeah, I don't know either. Nobody cares. I didn't know the football players were. I mean, some people do. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be a lot of people who know this who the survivor guys are. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't watch Survivor. But I'd rather another wrestler come with him or something. You know, maybe he brings somebody we know. But bringing survivor. I, I know it's mainstream thing. As long as they get survivor at their mentions, it helps. But uh, I don't know. I just can't get it. I, but that threw me. I'm like, man. That 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 gave you the feeling of like oh man is and that more he's gonna be like he's gonna retain it's not gonna change I just think Brian Cage is a good looking champion that thing would work for he, them. he would look super good he's a really good dude and he's a really good athlete hopefully we'll see but uh, Impact Tribe let us know what you think I want you to give predictions for all the matches go down the list the tag match with the girls Sue and Allie taking Akira and Jordan Eli Abyss Sammy Willie. Eddie Edwards Moose, Ultimate X, LAX vs. Lucha Brothers, Tessa Taya, and the main event of Brian Cage and Johnny Impact. Give us your predictions. I'm going to be looking at everything and replying to everybody the day of homecoming. So let's let's talk. Let's interact. I got some time before we head to the arena. Let's interact. I'll be on the, um, the Total Nonstop Impact account and my personal one. I'll be replying from both. Even Kyle will get some replies in there. We'll sign off on who's talking to you. But get us, uh, get with us, guys. Let us know what you think. If you're going to be at homecoming, look for me. I'll probably have my Hemi hoodie on. Okay. Just over my... Cause I heard it's a little chilly in Nashville, a little nipply out there. But I'll have a uh, hoodie that sets a big reaper on the back. It says Hemi. But in front, I'll have a freaking Impact Wrestling TNA-related shirt on. So look for that. I'll be wearing a TNA shirt and a Twitch hoodie. There you go. Twitch hoodie. That's Brian. Look for us. If you... If you see me, stop me, say what's up, let me know what you think about the show. Uh, you probably know, Probably don't stop me because I'm really grouchy. <laughs> Brian's probably grouchy. 90% of the time, he is grouchy. Don't stop him. Stop me. But let me. But let Kyle know what you think about him not being there because the whole GoFundMe thing didn't work out. Ah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Wait, I'm going to cut whoa, off whoa. really quick. Whoa. We're going to be at the tapings for Pop. They're no, not pop. Pursuit. Pursuit. We are. We're actually, yeah, let's mention that. We're going to be on the Monday tapings for Pursuit. What do you think? Are they going to have uh, new impact graphics? Is it all going to be changed? Is it going to be presented differently? Uh, I think the graphics have been really good last year. I just hate the Las, how they change it for like Las Vegas and Mexico. Dice thing. I think they change it per location. I, I know. I hate that. Yeah, you don't like that? I'm a fan of that? I, uh, they might change it. I don't think they will, though. I think they'll keep it pretty standard, just put Pursuit where Pop was. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think they've been doing a good job. But I see what they're doing. They kind of localize each uh, each market, which is nice. But uh, I don't think they'll change it. But, yeah, we'll be at the premiere for the Pop. Uh, or Pursuit. Pursuit. Gee, I keep saying I Pop. Well, so it both starts with a P. Yeah. yeah. So Pursuit Channel, guys, January 11th is that debut. We'll be, uh, we'll be there to see those tapes. We're not going to give shit away. Uh, about what happens there, but looking forward to that too. But yeah, guys, thank you very much for listening. Interact with us. You can find this podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at We Talk Impact. Just type in We Talk Impact, and it'll say Total Nonstop Impact. The reason we don't have Total Nonstop Impact for those handles is because somebody used it and they just sit on it, and that's why I couldn't get it. They just sit on it. So hopefully, I can if I can ever get those back, I'll change it. I promise. But. You can also find this podcast on Apple iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Spotify. Rate, review, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Uh, give us your feedback, guys. Interaction is key. We, As you see, we reply to everything. So let us know what you think, guys. Homecoming this Sunday. Pursuit debut. Thank you very much for listening. Brian, do you want to get let us know where we can find you? Uh, Twitter, at Skull17. Uh, basically, just using Twitter, so I'll just keep it that uh, Twitter, uh, twitch.tv slash Skull17. Um, I'll be streaming a little bit more, try to this uh, whole year. You know, give me some views. Yeah, give me some views. And uh, give me a follow on there, and there, there we go. go. You can find me, guys, at Vanilla Joke on Twitter and Instagram. You can also listen to me on the Backstage Boys podcast. Take a listen to that. 
And you can also get a hold of me, uh, where else? I'm trying to, oh, hemimusic.com. That's the intro song you hear to the podcast. That is uh, my band Hemi. Listen to hemimusic.com. Check it out, guys. Thank you again for listening. We will talk to you after homecoming. Later. Peace.